Hi, my name is Kate and you're very welcome here on my channel where I talk about fragrances. Today we have a truly interesting and exciting, at least for me, topic, Serge Lutens. Uh, it's a video that I've been wanting to film for a while and finally, finally we're here. And I will tell you about what I have in my collection and what fragrances I'm familiar with. Plus I will add some interesting facts about the brands and its creator, of course, Serge Lutens. So, pour yourself some coffee, tea, wine, sit on a couch or somewhere cozy and warm, and let's start talking about this wonderful brand. By the way, you see I have some um, Rahat Lukum, or Turkish Delight, straight from Istanbul, actually, um, just to get a little bit excited and inspired when we talk about this brand because it's creator Serge Lutens, who's a very unique artistic person with a very difficult life. We know that he's an orphan and he's a completely self-made man who became one of the most influential people in the fragrance industry of our time. But also, did you know that he launched the first makeup line for Dior? And 1967 or 69, somewhere around that time. He's also a photographer and he created this surreal images of models for pictures. And if you have time, just Google. Um, it's incredible. It's uh, something else. This person, this man, he sees the world in some very unique way. Um, we know not so many things about his uh, biography. We know um, again, that he's an orphan, that um, I guess he's a son of adultery. Um, and um, he took this through his life and his art, which we're going to see here too. Although there's not so much information, you know, they don't really describe fragrances that much, even on the website. And uh, it's kind of like, guess yourself <laughs> why it's called that way. Or um, there's just a lot of room for creativity. It's actually what I like about the fragrances as well. Most, or at least maybe half of the fragrances were created with a perfumer, Christopher Sheldrake. He's also amazing. I feel like um, their partnership is just perfection. The fragrances that they created together, they feel very um, one. They feel full. Uh, like there is nothing really to add to that. And I like this uh, about the fragrances here. Okay, so let's start discussing. And the first one I would like to discuss is Feminité du Bois, which is actually interesting because it's the first fragrance that Serge Lutens created for another brand. Uh, it was Shiseido. As far as I remember, it was just called Shiseido or something like this. It didn't have this name. But later, when Serge Lutens decided to create his own brand, he took the formula and... Um, I don't know, maybe there was some agreement there with Shiseido, maybe not, but he basically um, had this fragrance in his own line of perfumes. So, Feminite. I don't have a bottle at the moment, but um, I'm actually planning to find uh, the bottle um, of this kind, the older formulation. This or with Palais Royale, which maybe is just unreal to get because... I think people who have it, they know what they have. But in case, if you have some older formulations of Serge Lutens fragrances, especially the really important ones for the brand, let me know, please. I would definitely consider taking a look at what you have. If you're ready to say goodbye to them, you don't use them, you don't need them. And um, please let me know. Okay. Feminité du Bois uh, smells like wood and plum. Also, it has a little bit uh, of suede feel for me. At least it's texture. It reminds me a lot of suede. Um, maybe a little bit of alcohol in it too. It's like this wood was soaked in maybe rum or something. But I don't smell it much, but sometimes I get a whiff of it. Um, really beautiful fragrance. Really feminine. Um, but feminine, feminine in the best way. It's this woman who accomplished everything herself. It's this woman who's very proud. She's smart. She's an intellectual. Um, she doesn't buy a lot of things. She buys only the best things, <laughs> you know? So it's this kind of an image that I have when I smell this fragrance. It's very put together personality. 
And um, yeah, there's not much more that I smell here, at least on my skin. Uh, but yes, definitely something to try. Okay, next fragrance I would like to talk about is, let's talk about that Pura Noir. Um, this is actually the fragrance that made me cry. I'm a very sentimental person. And I remember when I just, I, it was a blind buy. I got this, you know, it was maybe this much, like half a bottle when I got this one. And I sprayed it for the first time. And it just was so beautiful for me that I started crying a little bit. So, um, if you know what I mean, <laughs> this is a very important fragrance for me. And it smells like tuberose with spices, with a little bit of coconut in it, but it's not um, coconut in a vacation on the beach kind of way. No. That tubra is actually a plant that grows uh, only at night and only at a certain time of the year and it uh, blooms very, very strongly uh, and then it dies. It just releases so much smell, so much scent um, that it doesn't live long, but uh, people describe it as intoxicating and here it was created through tuberose i guess maybe they do have something in common let me know if you ever smelled that plant because that flower because i don't like i never smelled it it seems like it's something rare but yes and it has this sharpness you know it's that's why i said spices maybe it's not even spices maybe it's something else but it's this sharp very bitchy <laughs> sign of tuberose it's not this soft tubers and oh my god it opens up so beautifully in the heat in the summer i wear this in the summer a lot it's a beautiful fragrance especially in this formulation i didn't try the new one i heard people uh, complaining that it's too coconutty so if you have a chance and it, it's something that interests you i recommend to find it in the older version let's move to another white floral fragrance fils de joie uh, I actually read somewhere that Fille de Joie, it's um, um, kind of a, let's say, daughter of joy, a, a girl of joy in slang in French. I'm not really sure. I didn't check that, but means a prostitute uh, or something <laughs> around that. But Fils de Joie is a son of joy. Maybe it's a son of a prostitute, which I don't know. You see, with Serge Lutens, it's like a puzzle. Sometimes you have to just guess and wonder what's going on and what does it mean it's also that's the case here this is one of the newer releases and this is jasmine this is honey this is also intoxicating this honey it's just incredible it's both honey and maybe a little bit just like two percent of beeswax to me because it's very honey like um and um mostly jasmine very strong smelling jasmine. It's, I feel like if you overspray this, you'll just have not only the headache, you will probably be hospitalized because it's, it's very strong. Also, uh, recommend to use it in the summer. Beautiful. Just amazing. Oh, it's like a wave. This fragrance, it has this tendency to like blow you away with a wave like that. Uh, look at this juice of the color too. It's beautiful. I really like the ornament on the bottle. Um, really, really pretty fragrance. Let's move to, uh, let's discuss Fleur de All these fragrances I wore in my skin, so I know how they open up, even though these are testers, maybe for some reason I decided not to get a bottle, or maybe I'm, maybe I'll decide to get it sometime later. Fleur de Ranger, orange blossoms, because it's in plural. Um, actually it opens up as a, um, uh, orange blossom soap on me. On my skin in particular, it's very, very soapy. Um, I don't understand why. I heard from people that it just basically smells like orange blossom, with fleur d'orange. On my skin, for some reason, it's a soap with fleur d'orange uh, scent. Cannot say much about it. I cannot say that I love it. I think this could make a very nice basic scent for every day, for the office. So consider that if it sounds something that you like. Uh, okay, next, let's, let's talk about five o'clock or gingembre. Uh, five o'clock tea with ginger. Beautiful. This is my home scent. 
I like to use it when I'm at home, when I'm working, when I'm sitting at my computer all day at the desk. Yes, it relaxes me. I also like to use it when it's um, when I'm stressed. This is uh, kind of my uh, pick me up scent. Really love it. Smells like black tea with bergamot, ginger, and a little bit of honey. Uh, smells like home. Smells very warm because of the spices. Yeah, it smells like um, you know you just made the fresh tea, and it smells like this little smoke um, because the water is still hot above the tea. So you breathe in um, that smoke. It's beautiful. I love this fragrance. Uh, very cozy, very nice for dark, kind of rainy, gloomy weather or winter. Highly recommend it. Um, I haven't tried it in a new formula in a bottle like this with a black sticker. I only tried it in this one. Um, I, I heard they didn't really make it worse. So I guess it's a safe buy um for in a new newer formulation too another cozy fragrance for fall and winter um ambois vanille either uh vanilla wood or vanilla forest and it definitely smells like that i actually heard that it's better in older formulation i have the new one as you can see yeah it smells like um vanilla pollen in a forest, you know, you came into the forest and it's sunny. It's actually sunny fragrance. I don't associate it with darkness and melancholy. I think it's very positive. So you just came into the forest and you see the ray of sunlight uh, going through the branches of the trees. And in that sunlight, there's this vanilla pollen. And you can touch it with your fingers, you know, smell it from yourself. And that's how I would describe this fragrance. It's vanilla, it's woody, um, there's coconut too, which I cannot say that I'm thrilled about. Uh, I heard that in all the formulation, you don't really smell the coconut. Here I definitely can smell the coconut, which is my least favorite thing about this fragrance, but overall, I really like it. And I would never say goodbye to this fragrance. I need to have it. It's pretty sweet. It's a sweet fragrance, but it's very airy. It has a lot of air, so it's not very difficult to wear. Sometimes, you know, when it's cyclically sweet and it's very thick, like you in Cocoon or the fragrance, that's when it gets hard. Here, I wouldn't say so. But still, if you don't really like sweet fragrances, I think you need to check and see for yourself. Nuit de Cellophane. It's um, kind of a sparkling night, something like this, like a... Uh, shiny night or something like that. something that sparkles. Uh, very nice osmanthus. So this is mainly about osmanthus that is very soft. I think that's the one of the best osmanthus fragrances that I've ever, ever tried. I noticed that on the dry down, it becomes kind of white floral. I see this a lot actually with uh, Serge Lutens fragrances. Uh, during the dry down, when it's already been a couple hours on your skin, it either goes woody or white floral. So it's usually mostly two ways of the development, at least to my nose. That's how I smell the base. Um, so this is definitely white floral because I think it has jasmine in the pyramid. Although there are no official pyramids for this fragrance, so we don't really know. Sometimes they mention something in the description, not in very much detail. So if you like Asmentis, uh, this is a must try. It's really, really good. Uh, and it's very, it's even safe for the office, for uh, when you go uh, somewhere where you're surrounded by people, it won't suffocate anyone. It's very easy to wear. Again, it's also pretty light and airy. Another fragrance, one of my favorite vetivers, by the way, I don't love vetivers. There are only three uh, vetivers that I like, and that's one of them. Uh, this is vetiver uh, oriental, uh, oriental vetiver. And, oh, yes, that's nice. It's very chocolatey, woody vetiver. Also very easy to wear. Um, it doesn't give me uh, the vibe like Ancartoir by Lalique, the, like the cold vetiver, this, like you're in a rainy forest and everything is covered in oak moss and it's wet and it's dark and there's fog. No, this is very positive. Yeah, positive chocolatey vetiver with some wood in it. Of course, I can smell a vetiver, but it's not annoying me here 
for some reason, I don't love the notion of that's very in general. Like, it's very hard for me to wear. I'm constantly aware of it, and it's kind of like drilling my brain. This one doesn't. I think because of the sweetness, it's much easier to wear because of its sweetness. Really nice. If you like me, if you don't like regular vetivers, I recommend to try this because that chocolate, I think it's patchouli. Uh, I think it's just very nice, uh, sweet kind of patchouli, uh, which softens it for me. And um, it's not very long lasting. It doesn't stay so long on my skin. But sometimes it's even good. You know, I like to refresh my perfume or change the perfume during the day. So that works for me. Uh, unless you really want like something that stays with you for next 15 hours. Mm, okay, let's talk about Louvre. Uh, she wolf or wolfess as I call her. Maybe, arguably my, okay, no, maybe not my favorite. I cannot, I cannot choose my favorite fragrance, but, um, Still, the pride of my collection, the Palais Royale uh, bottle here, the only one that I have. I want to have more Palais Royale, but uh, still, beautiful fragrance. At first, aggressive, very poisonous almond, very poisonous. Just this wolfess, she's alerted, she's on a hunt. She's, uh, you don't joke <laughs> with that animal. Uh, but then it transforms into this almond powder uh it's like uh she's feeding her pup her baby she's a caring mother and it becomes like white and musky um musky not in a bad way not a dirty mask a very nice mask like i already compared it to uh the belly of the animal you know where the fur is the softest where it's like even white maybe um it just like her tummy Beautiful, cozy. I like to use it at home too. Um, I don't smell. It doesn't project much. It doesn't. Uh, it's not the fragrance that just opens the door in front of you. At least from my experience, I don't smell it that way. Maybe only in the beginning, like first twenty minutes when it's <laughs> very very strong. But then it's just very soft and feminine. This is just ultimate femininity for me. It's like when um, when you need your strong and powerful and you decide you know uh, and protect but there is also this soft side of you that is also incredibly beautiful and uh nurturing i love this fragrance it's just such so much more than just a scent it's the whole philosophy i can write an essay about this fragrance to be honest beautiful love it a lot okay um next oh Arabi, uh, Arabia, uh, Serge Lutens, uh, he lives in Marrakesh. He has the whole, like, almost a castle there, something really beautiful, beautiful home. I think they take tour group, tourist groups there because of how beautiful it is. And he's very much inspired by Middle East and that culture, just Eastern culture in general. There are a lot of allusions um, to that, many of the fragrances by this house. But Arabi, it's hard for me to explain how it smells. It's really hard, but I will give you an example. So I hope you will understand. So if you've seen uh, Aladdin, a cartoon or a movie, and you remember in the beginning of the movie, he was running away from the guards when he was jumping on buildings, through buildings, on the roof and everywhere. That's how it smells. It's that old ancient town. It's uh, stone. It's dust. It's spices. He's probably running through a bazaar, like landing on the uh, bag, huge bags with spices. Um, and there is nothing flowery that I smell here. There's nothing like that. It's just this uh, ultimate uh, picture of Aladdin escaping. It's about spices a lot. It's about stone and it's about dust, at least to my nose. At first, I hated this fragrance. It was cold, and I tried it for the first time, and I was like, this smells disgusting. I don't like it. The base is unpleasant. But then I decided to wait till summer when it's hot, and I tried it in the summer in the hot air, and it just opened up so amazingly beautiful. It's it's incredible. 
Uh, I it literally, it just, it gives me hallucinations, to be honest. I feel like I close my eyes and I'm there. I'm in that picture that I just gave you. Um, it's insane. This fragrance, it takes me there. Um, and it's something. Just incredible. Incredible. Okay. Uh, let's continue our uh, Eastern subject and... Uh, talk about Shergi. This is the wind uh, in the Sahara Desert or some some kind of desert, and it smells like everything. It smells like hot sand. It smells like alcohol uh, dripping on that sand. It smells like wood. It smells like hay. It's and it's hot. When I spray it, like. When I smell it, it's hot. I feel like there is an, this illusion of hot air in my lungs and my nose. Beautiful, alcoholy, uh, sandy fragrance. Uh, to me, it's dark brown color. Almost, I mean, almost like the color of the juice. Incredible. Uh, love wearing it in the summer. I'm not sure I tried it in winter or maybe I did. But I think it's um, it's made for summer or early fall. Maybe, okay, maybe later fall too. Um, incredible. One of the best sellers from the brand. So uh, for a long time I resisted and didn't want to try it because everybody tries it. It's chargy. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little bit stubborn. You know, when something is too popular, I just want, don't want to go for it. That's why I also don't make a lot of videos about new fragrances, new releases, with, which I think I should change. I should do more releases uh, on my channel, but still, maybe I should change my philosophy a little bit. La religieuse. Um, it's um, a nun. I think it's translated as a nun. So this is jasmine and white musk. Very clean musk. I heard many times that in all the formulation, this fragrance smells like, smells much more like a dirty musk. Like there is a body, you know, like it's a, um, a nun, but she has like red silky underwear <laughs> under that robe. Uh, I heard that from several people, I think, or maybe some reviews on Fragrantic or something, which, could be fun to smell. Uh, I won't lie. I would like to smell that. I'm curious. Uh, this is a newer formula. And here the mask is very clean. So it won't scare you with uh, anything animalic. Jasmine and very soft and clean musk. Uh, nothing scary about it. A nice fragrance for me. Maybe not, not exactly my taste. Not for a bottle. Uh, I'm happy to finish this. And I think I'm okay. Another uh, Middle Eastern uh, inspired fragrance, my favorite amber fragrance. Nothing so far <laughs> compared to me. This is the best amber. Sometimes I'm wondering maybe I should get uh, Grand Soir by Francis Grosjean. Uh, maybe I should get Alambar by uh, Olfactive, by Laboratorio Olfativo. Sorry, sometimes I uh, confuse Olfactive Studio with Laboratorio Olfativo. <laughs> Uh, but then I smell this, and I'm like, who needs others, you know? <laughs> so this is amber with wood and bay leaf. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, at least on Fragrantica in the pyramid, but these uh, three notes that I smell the most. And it's not annoying, cloying, salty amber. Um, I think pepper. Yeah, I think pepper and spices too, yes. Yeah. Um... It was inspired by um, an image or or maybe several times he got it somewhere on a bazaar or a store somewhere in the Middle East or maybe in Marrakesh. Uh, like he got a little nice box, like a jewelry box or something like that is made of wood. And there was a little piece of amber in it. And um, that inspired the fragrance. Sometimes amber is a little rough for me. Sometimes I just cannot wear it because it's just constantly screaming at me. And this one is not screaming. This is just warming like a nice sweater. Uh, it's just there for you. It loves you. It warms you up. People say that it's very beautiful in the summer and that amber fragrances, they open very nice in the summer in the heat. I didn't try this in the summer because I associate this with winter. 
So this is my warm wool or cashmere sweater for winter. And I don't want to change that yet. <laughs> Maybe I will try it next summer, okay? But not this summer. Yeah. Love it. My favorite amber fragrance. Santal Majuscule. Um, I will actually spray it because for some reason I cannot remember it exactly. It's been a while I wore it and I cannot um, remember it. Yeah, so this is sandalwood. A little sweet. I think sandalwood with patchouli. Maybe a little bit of ember too. A rose? I think I smell rose too. Yeah, it's uh, actually very beautiful sandalwood. And uh, I think I'm going to get a bottle. At least I've been thinking about it for a while. Yeah, nice patchouli. It's really, really woody. Maybe there's even more kinds of wood here. I don't know. I didn't check the pyramid. Oh, also, again, there's no official pyramid for this. I heard people complaining that it's not really long-lasting. Um, I, I actually can confirm it's not really long-lasting. But really beautiful sandalwood. Yeah, it's a little bit sweet. Oh, it's so woody. I also smell a little bit of vetiver in it, too. It just has a lot of edges, uh, which I like about this fragrance. It's very complex. So if you're curious about sandalwood, try it. The last fragrance from my own collection is, but of course, not the last in its importance and significance, La Fille de Berlin, uh, a girl from Berlin, which I heard is also some kind of slang, whatever. I'm not sure, so I will not say it. Um, I really talked about this fragrance in my rose video. Um, so in the warm weather, this is a very nice honey rose. It's very sweet and luscious and comforting, very feminine. But when it gets cool, this is where this metal iron part comes out. This is when it becomes darker, mysterious. And this is when I see it on men, even more than women. I think, I mean, I love wearing it uh, in both kind of ways. I like wearing it when it's friendly and warm. And I like wearing it when it's spiky and cold. I like both. Just the cold weather brings out the metallic part of it, which I like too. I think it's beautiful. Made through geranium. This is not a rose. I know it smells like rose, but I definitely um, associate geranium with this metallic aspect. Um, and now they don't really use rose materials as much in perfumery because it's very expensive and not super eco-friendly. So they use geranium. And there's definitely geranium here. Very nice and exactly this color. So I actually associate it with the color of the juice perfectly. Servotans is famous for beautiful uh, juice <laughs> of the fragrances. Okay, guys, uh, let me know which fragrances by this brand you like or you would like to try or maybe you would like to learn more about. Maybe I can learn more with you because there are a lot of fragrances on this brand and... Um, I didn't have enough time, I guess, to check all of them, but I want to know what you think. If you like this video, please give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay with me and let's discuss more. Bye-bye.